But the Bible says, keep your heart, protect your heart, work on your heart, because there's all kind of things coming against your heart to try to corrupt your heart against the very one that God sent to help you. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Genesis 2 and 18, and it says, And the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a what? A help meet uh, for him. That word help me means one that is handcrafted, suitable, uh, exclusively for him, uh, and uh, also prepared. So that word, uh, when he says here, and I will make him a help meet, God wasn't messing around. He says, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto uh, Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever he called them, or called every living creature. That was the name thereof. And um, I guess I'll read verse 20, and it says, And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and of the fowl of the air, and every beast, and of the field, and out of the out, but for Adam, there was not found a helpmeet for him. Uh, that's the second time we said it in there, there was not found. When I saw this video on the congenital twins, it stirred me because what happens is I associate that with marriage. The Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. And how many of y'all know that marriage is under attack? Okay, let's try that again. How many of y'all know marriage is under attack? Yes. You know, you can be in love with each other and still be fighting against each other. You can love each other, but fight against each other. And the enemy hates marriage because marriage, because marriage is a covenant. And he hates covenant. He hates commitment. He hates faithfulness. He hates loyalty. He hates dedication. So the enemy wars against marriage because God ordained marriage between a man and a woman. And here we see, we see here on this video, these congenital twins uh, who had given a death sentence that they said, uh, and I apologize that the sound wasn't, wasn't better, it was was in other services, but basically it was saying that they had given a death sentence to these when they were babies that they would not live or make it. But here they are now six decades later and they have done something to break all the records. They're the oldest congenital twins in the world because they learned something that sometimes we in marriage need to learn. That marriage or the joining together does not necessarily make you successful, but what makes you successful when you learn how to work together. When you learn how not to be selfish among, about yourself, and you gotta learn how to work with the other one because it does not automatically work together if you don't do it together. Right. And you notice that part of it when they were kinda of looking together, of course they were joined together, but they were face to face in one part they were saying, love, love, I love you. I love, 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 love. Love is so huge. And I know a lot of times when people get together, they believe they're in love. But I tell them couples or people that are thinking about marriage or are married, you know, you need an extra dose of love. You need to be loving somebody, you know, to it's overflowing because once you say I do, some of that love going to trickle down. It's going it, to kind of kind of trickle away it's like you know you're seeing some things you never saw in them how do you know this oh I I, I got 43 years experience 40. some of that love you need to really have it because you're going to find out they're not you know everybody puts on their best when they're meeting somebody you they're, they're on their best behavior they're treating you as sweet 
And then when it comes down to them, you know, you find out that there's a little more that they're working through. Everybody has their different things. And I try to tell women, you know, uh, you know, you got to, you, a lot of women want somebody beside them. You want the companionship. You want the, the, uh, that name to change. You want different things to happen with, that comes with marriage. But it also, which we're going to get into more, it comes with work. Don't, get, don't try to get a man and have, expect a man to fulfill your life if you're not willing to help him. Because the scripture talks about a man needs help. You know, he's fine, he look good, he, he's, he's driving good, but he needs help. How do you or, know? How do you know? I, I got experience. <laughs> and then... <laughs> He, he's coming in with different things. You're coming in with your luggage. He's coming in with his luggage. So just understand, along with saying I do, you're saying I do to whatever it is in your life that I want to make you better. And in turn, the man will make you better. But it's with God. Amen. So, amen. I'm going to see if y'all prejudice today. If y'all gonna clap more for Brenda than for, you know, okay, we gonna say what's gonna happen here. So what happened uh, is that the enemy has assigned special spirits against marriage. And, you know, now they wanna try to say, and I don't wanna quote statistically or statistics because what happens if I quote, they, statistics change and statistics can be manipulated. And so I, I don't wanna, but any divorce in the church is unacceptable. But I understand that there is an exception to divorce because sometimes it just don't work out. But the majority of it is the reason why that they have not really worked on being joined together. Right. Because in marriage, there is a giving and a taking. There is an area of losing your, your life for the other one to help them. That's huge. Yep. And so when divorce occurs, nobody wins in a divorce. If these congenital twins were ever separated, they would both die. Their life is about being joined together, and their life is about working together. It is their working together that extends their life. Mm -hmm. right. If they were ever cut apart, they both would bleed, not just one. What happens in a divorce? Both bleed. You might think you're getting away from us, but you're going to bleed out there. So divorce is not always the answer. The answer a lot of time is change. It's about changing of, of your heart, changing your attitude. And a lot of times that's where it comes into this area that we're teaching on right now, and that is, is that we have to come to a place of sensitivity. See, the problem a lot of times in marriage is a lack of sensitivity. Yeah. Now, you that are here today and you're not married, I'm talking to you too. Because if you're ever thinking about getting married, you're going to have to deal with some of the stuff we're talking about. And you don't want to marry somebody uh, who does not understand what we're talking about because marriage can hurt really bad when you're married to somebody who is insensitive and does not operate and sensitivity. The growth of a marriage is sensitivity. I want you to put this quote down, and that is that the quality of marriage can be measured by the sensitivity displayed between both spouses. The quality of marriage can be measured by the sensitivity displayed between spouses. So the enemy, what he does is he tries to work to make us insensitive to one or the other by getting a bad attitude, disposition, somebody doing something that you wouldn't expect him. But nobody's perfect. I mean, if there was anybody close to be perfect, it would be me. <laughs> but if you ask Brenda, she would tell you, I'm not. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? We all got to work on our... Selves. Come on, we all got to work on our... Selves. And how many know that you are a full-time job? Amen. Amen. So that's why sensitivity in the relationship, we say things to each other that shouldn't be said. We act 
in different ways that shouldn't be, we shouldn't treat each other because our feelings got hurt, something happened. But, but God said, Adam needs a helpmate. Every man, how many men? Every man. Needs a woman. I'm going to try that one more time. Every man needs a woman. Because God said a man needs a helpmate. In other words, and I'm going to just explore this, I'm going to stay on this too long, but the book Proverbs 18.21 says that, uh, or 1822, and it says, he that findeth a wife. Come on, stay with me. Find it a good thing. So God says that you need a help meet, and he says he that find it a wife finds a good thing. Why? Because a man thinks on the left-hand side of his brain, logical and trying to figure out everything, and, and the woman thinks don't, uh, it's on the right-hand side of the brain where she's more emotional and feelings and stuff. And so what happens is, is that the, the man who does not have a wife is only operating with a half a brain. So when he gets him a wife who is a helpmate, he then gets the other half of his brain. Okay, watch this here. Watch this here. Don't get mad at me, brothers. Watch this here. Watch this here. Some of y'all looking at me like, okay. But the issue is, watch this here. There is a difference between a man and a woman. Right. Come on, there's a major difference between a man and a woman. Amen. There's, well, y'all, y'all mad already? There's a major difference between a man and a woman. There's a book called Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus because there's such a difference. But the thing is that God brought the man and the woman together to be able to work together and that the spirit of selfishness would never have place in the marriage and that there would be a high level of sensitivity that would open the door for growth and development and blessings upon their life. Amen, 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 amen. So look in Genesis. Look in Genesis. Well, let, let me go from there. Go, go with me to Proverbs quick, quickly. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs, fourth chapter. And look what it says here in Proverbs 4. I think it's verse 23 or so. Proverbs 4. Are you there yet? Yeah, it is. Verse 23. Now look, look at the first word in Proverbs 4, 23. The first word is what? Keep. What's the first word? Keep. keep. That word keep is a military term. Do I got any military people in here? Any military people? Two people? Okay. Uh, y'all know what military, it means to guard. The word keep means to guard and to protect with your life, like your own sentry or own duty. It says, it says, keep thy heart. Come on, somebody say that. Keep thy heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence but out of it or out of the heart or the issues of life. When your heart is messed up, listen to me. When your heart is messed up, your life is going to be messed up. We take tests for everything else except for licensing, except for marriage. Relationships that win, you'll learn how to work on you first if you want to improve your relationship with others. You know, isn't it something? Uh, when you drive a car, you got to go and take a test to get a car license, to get a motorcycle. You got to take a test to get a contractor license. But when you get a marriage license, you have to take no test. You just go and do it. And so it's, it's already almost basically doomed for failure before it gets started. So that's why I try to encourage people, let's take the test before. Go to counseling, read books, learn each other how we each other think and see if there is a, a, a really a cohesiveness that you're willing to work together. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's a covenant benefit for every believer. Coming soon is our healing school with Dr. Brenda K. Godot, where she demonstrates Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Details coming soon. Plus, something fresh and exciting happening every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. with Pastor Philip George Godot, Jr. at CCC North's Chapel. It's a casual setting with an anointed word, happening only on Saturday evenings. CCC, we're making plans for the men's conference and our first father-son banquet. 
If you're a single mom and you have a son who needs a sponsor, contact the office immediately at 916-929-5725. It's our first father-son banquet this August. Are you looking to reboot and recharge during the week? Well, join Dr. Philip George Goodell for his new Tuesday morning Bible study at 10 a.m. Take a break from your daily routine and dive into God's Word with our Tuesday morning Bible study with Dr. Goodell. If your heart is messed up, that's why the Bible says keep your heart, protect your heart, work on your heart. Because there's all kind of things coming against your heart to try to corrupt your heart against the very one that God sent to help you. And that's why when a man findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Because, see, she's there to be a helpmeet. And the problem when a man does not understand sensitivity, what he thinks is that the wife is nagging when she's trying to help him. Come on, ladies, help me out. Come on. Come. He thinks she's nagging. He thinks she's uh, uh, combative. But she's not combative and not nagging. She's just trying to help you. And can I just say this? Can I say this? Yes. And men need help. Yes. If there's a brother by you, there's a man by you, tell him, you need help, brother. You need help. <laughs> You need help. See, some of y'all, some of, some of them so busy right now, they ain't going to look up, they ain't going to say nothing. No, man, I, ain't, I don't need no help. I'm all right by myself. No, you need help. We need help. Okay, all right. Look with me in Proverbs uh, 20, 20, 23. Proverbs 23, real quickly. Proverbs 23. And look at verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh, as a man thinketh. Come on, y'all. Where's the man what? Thinketh. As a woman what? Thinketh. Thinketh in his what? In the heart. See, it is, everything is about the heart. See, what the enemy is doing is working against your heart to keep your life from moving forward. For out of your heart are the issues of life. If I don't like the way my life is right now, listen to me. Quit complaining about your life the way it is and look at your heart. Change the heart. Change the life. That's right. Change your heart, change the life. Because out of your heart are the issues of life. So what's in you is coming out. I've had some women tell me there is no good men. That's a lie. There's a lot of good men. I got at least seven in here. Some of y'all should have had all y'all should have had your hands up. You're slow though. That's all right, okay. There's at least, huh? I've had women tell me there is, there is no good men. Then I've had some men say there's no good women. That's a lie. There's at least 10 of them in here. <laughs> so here it says, as a man thinketh in his what? So is he. So all of us in here who have had any kind of a relationship with people, <coughs> excuse me, who have had any kind of relationship have had some kind of damaging things happen to us in a relationship. Right. <coughs> Hello? Yeah. And see, that's where the enemy is trying to attack your heart. You know, even Brenda talked about her love, you know, what trinkles out or trinkles down or some kind of, what were you saying about that? I'm going to get that because I'm trying to guard my heart right guard now. Guard your heart. You have so much love, you just have an overflowing, like your cup overflows. I didn't hear all of that when you said well, that. Well, you, you wanted me to explain it. You wanted me to, to uh, bring it out a little better. So that's what I was saying. Because I don't want it to trinkle out. I mean, it don't, you know, it's, it's just overflowing. We four, because you're so excited. You're so, so, you know, it, glad about it and then some of that is you need all that that overflowed when you actually get into the relationship because it's you gonna need it and a little bit more <laughs> I mean it's a good thing it's good because you want to be able to help 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 them and so you need that love to be able to help when you love somebody you know just like them the, they, the, the congenital twins you know, they loved each other and they were willing to work together. When a relationship, 
You have this and, and it was very, you look at them trying to get in the swimming pool and out of the swimming pool, out of a vehicle. It was hard work to get anywhere because they both had to work together to go somewhere. And when, if the enemy can bring division, confusion, strife, negativity into your marriage, or in your life, he stops you from working to go somewhere because now you're focused more on the negative thing than you are on the positive thing. Are y'all with me? Okay, let's go back to Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. So see, my commitment, uh, I've been, like Brenda said, we've been married for 43 years. And, uh, and uh, I just want to testify that Brenda has not been the easiest thing to live with. Oh, y'all laughing. Okay, but, but see, I, again, she's talking about because we both had to work on because we were so different, raised from different communities, raised in different family environments, have different ideologies. We're just so different in so many areas. And if it wasn't, thank God, for the word of God, exactly. we wouldn't be together today right. because it was the word and the truth of the word that helped me to accept her with all her flaws. And, uh, <laughs> and it was the word of God that helped her to deal with me with all my flaws. <laughs> See, we both had, had issues, but if we were to focus more on the negative part of each other, we wouldn't be together today. We're the congenital twins. We had to learn how to work together to get, go anywhere and do anything because there were so many obstacles that we had to overcome. And that is true with any marriage. Is that right? Any marriage. Yeah. So back to Genesis. Back to Genesis in verse uh, 20. And it says, and Adam gave names to all the cattle of the fowl of the air and of every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him, mm -hmm. so one that was suitable, one that was properly uh, made for him, a good fit. And then it says in verse 21, it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And it says, And he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh thereof and stead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, woman and brought her unto him. So we see here where that man was incomplete in a sense by himself. Mm -hmm. He needed a help meet. Mm -hmm. If we didn't need one, God wouldn't have made one. So he made one for the man and he took a rib out. Now I just want to make special note, brothers, he took one rib. He didn't take spare ribs. Now that you've heard the word, I want you to accept Christ in your life. It's the greatest thing that can happen for you. So say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now, if you did that, you've already, he's in your life. Thank God you have to do nothing else but just open your heart. If you did that, I'm in agreement with you. Write us, call us, email us, uh, text us, or go on uh, at Philip Godot, either Twitter or Facebook, and we are getting being back in contact with you. Love you, praying for you, move forth in your life. Because when I ask men who want a healthy relationship, how many books have they read on it? Now they can tell me about all their football stars or basketball or baseball or soccer. But when I said, now you can tell me all the statistics and names and all that kind of stuff, but you can't tell me that you have ever read or did apply yourself to have a strong, healthy relationship between your marriage. And see, marriages plateau, they, they die, they get stagnated, 
because of the lack of information or continuing to put into it. And that foundational man is the one that has to continually understand he's the giver. He's the giver in it. He's the one that is the projector to make it happen. Men, it's time to man up. Men, join us this summer for the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. We are going to dive deep into issues only men can relate to, from relationships to career moves to the secret sins most men don't want to discuss in public. We get challenged a lot more than people think that we get challenged. More temptation. I don't know if you are a real man, but I'm talking to the real men. We expect to see you at the Real Men's Conference getting built up on the Word of God this August. See you there. You don't want to miss this one, guys. This is not for the ladies. It's the Real Men's Conference in Sacramento, California. It's time to man up, men. For more information, just log into our website or call us. Be there. Dr. Brenda K. Godot of Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento, California is asking you to save the date. We're coming to Atlanta, Georgia, August 11th and 12th. It's the Love Your Life Conference hosted by Pastor Patricia Gregory. Ladies, this is a tailor-made conference just for you. Join us for two days of anointed word and fellowship. It's in Atlanta in August. Just go to our website for more information. Plus, her Love Your Life conference heads back to California in Sacramento on November 9th. And then, it's FCMI's Leading in These Times in October. That's our two-day conference and workshops to help learn how to lead in ministry and business in the marketplace. And we're already looking ahead to next year to our Church Growth Strategies Conference in February, where Drs. Phil and Brenda Godot share decades of experience on growing a successful and thriving ministry. And then we make a U-turn for our FCMI International Conference July 2017. There's a lot of great things happening this year and 2017. You can find it all on our websites and through social media. We are making a difference in our community. Don't forget, you can always learn more about us on the web. Subscribe to us on YouTube and see the latest videos from Drs. Philip and Brenda Godot. It's easy. I am the God of more than enough. I am a El Shaddai God. I'll bring you back and then I'll lift you up. Just log on to YouTube and type in Philip Godot Ministries and then just click subscribe. The video messages are right there on your screen. And if you're out and about, we also have a smartphone app so you can catch the Godots on the go. The app is easy to find. Just search Calvary Christian Center for both Android and iPhone users. Stay informed, stay connected, and stay encouraged on YouTube and with our amazing app. It's easy to become a partner. Just log on to our website and you'll receive special video messages and updates. Thank you, partners.